Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Barbecue Talk. On uh, today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all the knives that I've used in the last couple years, you know, just to trim and to serve barbecue. So if you guys know me, trimming is a large portion of what I talk about only because if you start with a good product before it goes onto the smoker, it fixes a lot of issues. Having the proper tools to trim your briskets, your ribs, and all that kind of stuff to get it to the right place to where once you're outside and you're putting stuff on the smoker, all you really need to worry about is just maintaining temps, not having to worry about edges being burnt or things just falling off because you, you left some like loose hanging stuff on it, um, really does make a difference. And so, um, you know, with that, I wanna talk about certain things that I use, uh, a couple knives that I like, uh, things that I moved away from, and just kinda showing what I got. So the very first knife that I ever used, I mean, I think mo like most people who have watched Frank Franklin videos that he posted like years ago, um, is going to be this uh, Dexter um, straight six inch boning knife. Uh, and this one right here has been, I've had this one forever and I haven't really used this one too much because uh, although I, this one is a very good knife to use, the one that I prefer is the, the curved boning knife. Uh, I just feel like I have a little bit more control with this one. The profile of the knife is just a little bit easier to get when you're shaving off like that top fat, it just like the curvature of the knife. And I feel like I can get nice longer kind of flap of fat off of it. It takes less work. I don't have to sharpen my knife quite as much uh, while I'm trimming briskets and it just, it just feels a lot like I have a lot more control with it. Now lately, uh, I think because of you know, the fame of Franklin using these knives and everyone else picking up on them. And I remember I was trying to, I think I bought this one pretty cheap at like $15 at one point. And then, you know, the next time I went to go look for one because I wanted a new one, it was almost like 35 bucks. And I was like, I am not going to spend 35 bucks for a knife that, you know, I'm probably going to, you know, wear out. And then eventually I'm just going to throw it away and just use a new one. And so I think this is the kind of, you know, if you guys go on Amazon and stuff like that, this is probably the next big brand uh, that you'll find. Hopefully you guys can read that. But it's uh, the Torinox, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, and again, this is the six inch curved Boeing knife as well. And this one actually, I might prefer this one over the Dexter, but I like the grip on it a lot more. It's uh, It has more of a textured grip, so it doesn't slip as much. One thing with the Dexter sometimes is like if you're, you know, you try to keep one hand clean, one hand dirty or whatever, but sometimes when you get a little bit more fat and it starts to kind of start melting when you're turning briskets, this does tend to get a little bit slippery. So this one is my new favorite one, but again, you know, anytime I look at prices for these knives, you know, I'm not really looking for them now because uh, I got a bunch, but they always just, just skyrocket in price. So just be conscious of that, that it might be really cheap one time, it might be really expensive. So, uh, but my preference is the curved Boeing knife, just because like I said, I like the profile. I feel like I can get a, a nice longer strip of fat off of my briskets when I'm doing it. Feel like I have more control with it rather than uh, just kind of like the straight knife. All right, so next let's talk about the knife that I use for uh, trimming ribs. This is a 10 inch chef's knife. Uh, this one is by Mercer. Mercer right there. Probably a couple days before I was gonna be put in the trim room for the first day at Terry Black's and I knew like we had to trim a bunch of ribs and I didn't have a knife uh, to do that. I had a bunch of these curved bony knives but those aren't the best for trimming ribs especially when you're trying to go through all that cartilage and so, you know, and you know, I, if you guys have seen my, uh, or have heard my story of when I you know, cut my hand open in the trim room is because you know, I was using a knife that I wasn't comfortable with and it was, uh, it was that one knife, I keep forgetting what it's called, but it has that kind of like this, but it kind of bows up in the end. And you know, the person who told me or who was training me at the time was like, just make sure you don't rock, like rock that knife. And then I was like being careless. And then I was trying to go through cartilage and foop, and then I split corner there. There's, I had to get four stitches there. So it was not very fun. And because of that, I was like, I am never using that type of knife again. And I've had this knife for the last, uh, you know, four years or so, 
and it's been pretty good. So the other thing that I want to say about this one is I like a 10 inch, like I have another eight inch chef's knife that I like to use for, you know, just any other prep like I would use in the kitchen. Uh, I don't really prefer using a 10 inch like for just doing other like chopping and cutting and stuff uh, because the blade's a little bit bigger so you kind of have a little less control. But in terms of using what I, why I chose this one for uh, trimming ribs is that sometimes a cartilage can be a little bit, can be really thick, like right where the uh, breastbone is on that spare rib. And I wanna have a nice sturdy knife so that I can put pressure on it and just really chop through it. And not have to sit there and just like try to chop through it multiple times. And obviously you shouldn't be doing that with any knife because if, you're, if you do, then you obviously just need to get a sharper knife or sharpen your knives. Uh, but I do like having that longer blade on that one. It tends to be, I feel like, not that it's a significantly more weight on an eight inch chef's knife compared to a 10, but uh, I do feel like when tr trimming ribs, like it, does, it does give me the best control. All right, the next, uh, next set of knives that I wanna talk about is when you're serving barbecue. Uh, I think that this is where uh, you see a lot of people having there are some people who have like custom knives, have custom chef's knives when they're uh, when they're cutting brisket and stuff like that. But I personally, I just really like a good serrated. This is a Dexter knife. This is another one that I've had for a really really long time, uh, and this is one is serrated. I don't know if you can tell with this one, like all the uh, like it, it's not as serrated as it should be. It's still kind of smooth, but you know I use this one. Uh, a couple months ago to cut some meat and actually still cuts really, really well. Uh, but the one thing that, uh, cause this is a 12 inch and I would say that sometimes like if you're on a cutting block and stuff like that, having a big knife doesn't really get in the way. But if you're dealing with a small space, you know, you don't want a giant chef's knife so that you're gonna be, you know, maybe you got sauce or pickles or whatever in front of you. You don't wanna be hitting that stuff all over the place. So, um, you know, that's where I moved over to Picking up this one, this is, a, uh, this is the same brand as uh, the chef's knife that I use. This is the, this is the Mercer. And uh, kind of like I said with just going from, you know, the two different types of, of uh, curves and eyes that I'm using, you know, the reason why I moved to this one, for one, the Dexter 12 inch knife was so expensive that I couldn't even believe it. I think it was like, $55 when I was trying to look for it again. Um, and again, this was in the middle of quarantine when I was looking at these prices and it was just ridiculous. I'm like, I'm never gonna spend that much money on a, uh, a knife with a plastic handle. Uh, but I think this one was about 20 bucks. And the one thing that I do like about this one is, if you can see like the handle, it is a little more elevated. So like when I am cutting a lot more, I don't feel like my, uh, I'm, I have to worry about like hitting my knuckles on the cutting board and stuff like that. Also, the it's a lot. It's uh, I think this one's a, an eight inch, I believe, or maybe it's a ten inch, and it's long enough to still cut through a really, really big brisket. It's not like getting in the way, and it's not knocking stuff over and stuff like that. And also, kind of like you can see the difference between the. Again, this one's a really old knife, and I've I guess I've worn this one out quite a bit, but like. I mean, that's a huge, huge difference. So it doesn't have as many serrated parts, but they're a lot, lot sharper. Um, and I haven't really had any problem with it. You know, again, when you're dealing with cut, cutting, uh, you know, just barbecue in general, whether you're cooking ribs, whether you're cutting brisket and stuff like that, you just wanna make sure that when you get that lat, like as you're cutting through and that last pull through, you're, all that stuff that's on the bottom, you wanna be able to finish in that last cut. I personally do not like using a chef's knife on a brisket because you have to add a certain amount of pressure. I'm like, you know, teaching someone how to cut brisket and stuff like that is that, you know, you're using serrated knife to cut through that fat first. And once you kind of break that kind of, uh, that bark on the outside, then it's clean from then on. Same thing like a chef's knife, right? As soon as you can, as soon as you can break that bark, then it's kind of smooth sailing from there. But a lot of times, because you don't have that serrated edge, you're having to press down a lot to break through it. And by the time you get to a point where it's pretty clean cutting, you've squashed that meat quite a bit. That's just my recommendations, guys. So again, as of now, my favorite knives are this six-inch curved boning knife from I keep forgetting the name. 
Victorinox right here. A Mercer 10 inch uh, chef's knife for doing my ribs. And then this Mercer 10 inch serrated bread knife right here for just for serving. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I was able to explain different things that I use. But again, guys, this is just my preference. This isn't something that, you know, you have to use. You know, nowadays you just see so many people doing interesting things. Like they'll take this bread knife or they'll take a, uh, a carving knife that's not serrated. And I see a bunch of people being able to trim briskets like it's nothing because you have such a like such a long blade that they're able to like I was talking about the curve I, I have a better um, you know I can get a better slice off it but they're taking the entire length of the blade and cut like being able to cut off all that fat from top to bottom on a brisket and it's actually really cool to see uh, I haven't tried it yet I'm just kind of used to using knives like these but um, you know, whatever works for you guys, whatever makes the work most efficient, whichever equipment that you think you can keep sharp as possible and that makes the work just a lot faster and all that, like that's what's most important. So definitely try out different things. Um, try out, if you want to try out a bony knife that's straight compared to the curved one just to see maybe you like it better because it is a little bit sturdier. Maybe with a chef's knife, maybe instead of 10, you, maybe you might like the eight when you're trimming ribs, who knows? But uh, it's just experimentation and just, I've been playing with these knives for, I don't know, for like a decade now. So that's why I've, I've tried to figure out what I like and why, uh, but those are the three knives that I really like. So uh, again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Like, subscribe, share this videos with other barbecue people that you think might help. And uh, if you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.